All right, so far we've done uh, programming in of milling, single block or single screen features such as a mill frame, mill circle, things like that. Now we're gonna work on doing holes. One of the differences when we talk about doing holes, if I bring up a program where I already have a holes block, first of all, whatever set of holes you're doing, whether if they're all the same, they're gonna be in one block. They won't be in, in separate dif different blocks. So here you can see we've got a program with a mill circle, a mill contour, and then a holes block. Like the mill circle, when we did a feature like that, we programmed that there was nothing over here on the right side. There were no sub blocks. It was only one screen of information that we needed to give the control for milling that circle. Here, when we get into holes, we have still a single block, but you can see that we have different uh, operations going on over here to the right. So we'll have the center drill, the drill, tap, boring, reaming, whatever processes we're going to do will be stacked all together, still on the same block, but as different sub blocks. And then you'll notice here, the last thing we do also in that block is tell it where. So we're gonna tell it what we're going to do, what processes, and then also the where are we going to do that. If I go into this holes block, you see that we have block three, and now everything is going to be uh, separated out in operations here. So we have the center drill is operation one, the drill is operation two, tap is operation three, and then our last operation is four, which is where we're going to do those things. One of the biggest mistakes we see people make is they will do block one will be a center drill, block two is a drill, block three is a tap, and block four would be a locations block. Well, those are all disjointed. The first three tells me what I want to do. It has no locations. The last one tells me where to do it, but it doesn't have any processes with it. So very important, one block, multiple operations. All right, so let's go ahead and program print number seven, intro seven. So we're going to go to our program manager, new conversational program. I'm going to go set my stock geometry, part setup, more stock geometry. This is going to be a box. Yes, I want to manually size it. And I look at the information on my print. So 1.37 in X, 1.86 in Y, and 1.35 in Z. So this is the first time that we find a print where the back left corner is zero, not the front left corner. So we're going to be using the X, Y, and Z reference positions to move our stock into position. Remember, part setup or part zero is a static location in the machine. We cannot move that. So we have to move our, our stock, solid model stock, around that zero point in reference to that. We can't move the zero point. So the way we do that is we use these reference positions. So if we don't put any values in the reference positions, it assumes that our front left corner of the part is zero. If we do put some values in here, we can use those to slide the stock. Notice that part zero never moves, but the stock moves around part zero. And I do that by putting some negative values here in the uh, reference positions. Again, I'm moving the stock. So I'm not moving zero positive to the right and positive up. I'm moving the stock negative to the left and then down to get my position. So let's take a look at our numbers here. And we want to move, in this case, only the Y. I want to take the stock and I want to move it from that bottom left corner just down negative in Y by the full distance of the part, which is 1.86. Negative 1.86. So now when I draw my graphics, that top left corner will be my zero location. All right, so the next thing we want to do is set up some tools. So I'm going to go to tool one here. 
we look in the upper right corner, we have three tools. One is a center drill. So I'm going to select center drill here. It's going to be a 0.125. And you'll note that on any one of our tools we can put in here, we talked about this in the video where we set, we set up some tools, but I'm going to go into my uh, advanced verification graphics or advanced tool settings and I can set the information to more accurately describe this tool that I'm using. So as I highlight through each one of these fields you'll see that it on the on the image here it's showing me what it's asking for. So the diameter is 0.125, the tip diameter let's say it's 0, 050, um, the, sh the shank diameter, the length, the angles. So I can set these things up to, to more accurately represent whatever the tool that I'm using is. And when I'm done, I just hit exit and it takes me back to the, the main screen where I can put in my speeds and feeds and coolant information and, and so forth. All right, so there's our center drill. We're gonna do tool two, which will be a 5 16 drill. So we'll select drill, 5 16 0.312. Tool three is a 3816 tap. So we'll do a tap. Now I can either type in 0 0.375, 16 threads per inch, or if it's an odd number like a 1032 or an 832 or something you don't know the size of, or a metric tap, for example, I can click on this little icon here. It brings up a inch or metric grouping of taps and I can slide until I find the tap that I want. In this case 3816. So I would go over here until I find a 3816. Double click that and it would put in that same information. 3816 is pretty easy. If this was a 1032, an 832 or a metric I may not know those values so I can select it from there and it would fill that in for me. All right, so I have the three tools in that we need. So now we're gonna go and start writing the program. So I'm gonna to go to our input screen, go to part programming, and we're gonna select holes this time. So we have a list of the different types of operations. We have drilling operations, tapping, boring reaming, some really special ones for back spot face, which would allow me to deburr the bottom side of a hole. And then I have three different operations here or three different selections for locations. A bolt circle, locations, which is an infinite number of X and Y locations, or rotary locations if I'm on a machine with a rotary. We're going to select our first operation here, which will be the eighth inch center drill. That's a drilling operation, so I'm going to click on drilling operation, and then I'm going to select center drill. It wants to know the Z start, which is a rapid two position above the part, my final depth, let's say we go down an eighth of an inch. I'm going to use tool one. Now I click on next hole operation. Notice I'm still in block one, operation one. I click on next hole operation. This is going to be also a drill. Drill. And I am now on operation two, still of block one. So I'm wrapping to point one. I'm going to go down, uh, this is tapping three quarter inch deep, so I'll go down one inch. I'll use tool two here. Next hole operation is going to be my tap. I'm going to rigid tap because I have it available to me. We're going to go down three quarter, that's what the print says, using tool three. Now, this dwell time does not mean it's going to sit at the bottom of the hole and keep rotating, but dwell. That just means it's going to come to a complete stop at the bottom of the hole, giving it time for the momentum to stop before it releases. Sometimes that'll help you from breaking very small taps and things like that. One other thing we might note when we're in the rigid tap block that isn't available in single tap or regular tap is you have 
a peck depth. So I could peck down an eighth of an inch, come back out. Peck down a quarter of an inch, come back out. Things like that. Unnecessary here, but I wanted to point those fields out. All right, so that's our rigid tap. Next whole operation will be our locations. So we select locations and we start looking at the print here. So our X like location for this hole is 0.68. Y is negative 0.93, because again, we're up in that top left corner. And you see that it automatically took whatever my last X position was and it populated this field for me. If I don't finish this with, an, with another Y, this isn't a valid location and it won't be used. In the next print we do, we'll see why it does this. We're able to use that to our advantage. But again, if I don't put another value over here in Y or I don't hit enter, it won't accept it. I can just move on. If you don't like to see that, you can simply hit delete location and that'll go away. So now if I go over and I hit my draw, we'll slow that down so we can see it happen again. You see that our upper left corner is our zero point and we have a hole drilled all the way down, that's the pink, and then three quarters of an inch we stop with the tap. So that's how we do a holes block. Again, it's one block, multiple operations, and this is the first time that we've been able to move our stock into location based on a, a, a corner of the part that wasn't the front left corner.